a leading presidential candidate wants to reduce the total size of the government. And he's not alone. There's plenty of politicians that would love to shrink the federal workforce. But it's not by 10 or 15 percent. We are talking 75 percent elimination. That would take us from 2.1 million federal employees today to about 500,000. So imagine the impact that would have when you're waiting at the VA, when you're waiting at Social Security Administration, or maybe immigration or the IRS. When was the last time this country had 500,000 federal employees? Well, you would have to look all the way back to 1933 when we had 591,000 government workers. That was before World War II. And back then the total US population was only at 125 million. When I hear this type of rhetoric, I can't take it serious because I understand the dynamics when it comes to political campaigns. You say things that are outrageous. You say things that are borderline radical. It's not full blown radical. You say things like this because it captures attention, because it's on headlines. It makes for great TikTok videos. This is what energizes campaigns. So I'm not taking this at face value. I'm not taking it as 100% he wants to take all these government jobs away. I'm taking it as him wanting more attention. The thing about political campaigns, regardless if it's at the national level or at the local level, you will hear people say what they're going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to reduce the budget. I'm going to do that. But rarely will they dive deep into the details and they'll show you how they're going to do it. There was a, a mayor campaign recently in my city and the mayor sent out these brochures of I'm going to improve green areas. I'm going to you know, revitalize the economic growth within the city. All these things about what they're going to do, but no details. The details were missing. I even went to the web page and scrolled through the web page like, how are you going to do this, candidate? How exactly are you proposing to meet your goal? But the details are gone. I guess nobody really cares about the details. The general public doesn't care about details. Vivek did give us some details, though, and he said a president can circumvent civil service laws. And basically what he would do if elected is he would issue a mass RIF, which is a reduction in force. And the only thing that he says he would need to do is give a 60 day notice and then also give the agencies time to figure out the preferences on who would get fired first. He said this even though there's decades of legal precedent that has restricted the executive branch's power in issuing these type of actions. Now let's say he does this anyway, right? Say he gets approval and no one has an issue with it. He just go, goes ahead and fires over a million federal workers. The federal workers have the right to appeal to the merit board. So what that would end up causing is years, three, four, five, six years of appeals by federal employees. Then he goes on to list the agencies that he has top of mind, his priorities to eliminate completely. And that includes FBI, ATF, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Education Department, and the Food and Nutrition Service in the Agriculture Department. This isn't the first time that a politician has threatened to dismantle the federal service, and it certainly will not be the last time it happens, but you need to get used to this because, you know, election season is among us. The next 12 months, you're gonna be hearing politicians coming out in favor of destroying complete agencies. And really, at the end of the day, this really comes down to spending. It comes down to the deficit, right? We have a trillion dollar deficit. It's over a trillion dollars. So what are we spending our money on? If you look where the tax dollars are going, you would see that over half the tax dollars are going to Medicare, Social Security, and Defense. The cost to pay the salaries of federal employees is at $752 billion a year. And that accounts for 12% of total spending. That means 88% of what we spend money on it has nothing to do with federal employees. So if we needed to make cuts, where could we make them? For starters, it's estimated that over 200 billion a year in federal spending goes to improper payments. That's crazy. Think of the times we live in. We have AI becoming more prominent. We have technology out there. How are we not catching, identifying improper payments before they're going out? Why are we not safeguarding taxpayers' money to a greater extent? Add that 200 billion to the over 100 billion that we sent to Ukraine this year, a foreign country that's not a member of NATO. We gave them over 100 billion dollars of taxpayer money. So if you combine those two amounts, that's half of what you need to fund federal employment. Then, in my opinion, we need to look at defense. We're spending close to a trillion dollars a year on defense. Do we need to be doing that? 
I was in the military for 20 years. Contractors would come in with the latest new technology. We would test it for weeks, if not months, and millions of dollars would go into these projects. A lot of times, the military wouldn't even agree to buy the equipment, but we still spent millions and a lot of time testing out those equipments. There are so many projects when it comes to defense. We are spending so much. Who are we defending from? Who, who is a threat to invade us? Is it Russia? Do you think Russia is going to get on the ships and come over to the United States? Logistically, that doesn't even seem feasible. How many aircraft carrier does Russia have? How many aircraft carriers does China have? Is anyone seriously a threat to the United States at this particular point in time? And certain people might be quick to point out, well, we spend the most on defense and that's why we have nothing to be worried about. No, we don't have anything to be worried about because Mexico is our neighbor and Canada is our neighbor and everyone else is incredibly far away. And if you are concerned with an airstrike occurring, then, then spend money on air defense. But that is not where we're spending the majority of the money for defense. It's not on air defense. It's all of these other pet projects. The number one vulnerability that we have, in my opinion, right now in this country, what is the most likely to happen and keep happening are cyber attacks. We need to strengthen our ability to defend against cyber attacks not by the latest new jet fighter or this super tank that's coming out next year. None of that. Regardless of how you feel, it's going to be a long year coming up uh, with people telling us that the government's way too big, even though it's at the same size now that it's been over the last decade. Nothing has really changed. All right, so if you're still interested in federal employment, I want you to check out a live stream I did recently, answered over a dozen questions. You can learn more about that if you watch this video next. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.